Hi there. Uh, today we are going to be talking about sentence functions in English. <clears throat> now we've already been through word classes, or what some people call parts of speech, uh, and I'll repeat this quickly. So if I, for example, have the sentence I eat, I eat breakfast. Uh, in Paris. Here we have the pronoun. We have a verb. We have a noun. We have a preposition. We have another noun. Now, names of places are also nouns. They are what we call proper nouns. Now in this um, lesson, we are going to delve one level deeper into linguistic analysis, because word classes, word classes are not enough for us to, to analyze sentences. So today we are going to uh, talk about sentence functions, and I'll give you an example here of what sentence functions are. So even though I is a pronoun, the word class pronoun, the sentence function of I is the subject of the sentence. So the subject of a sentence is the thing or the person um, which does the verb. So the, the agent of the verb. And then we have um, eat is the, the word class verb, and it it's the uh, the sentence function of verbal. Now this is maybe the easiest to translate from word class to uh, to sentence function. But the, the one thing that I would just emphasize here is that a verbal can consist of more than one verb. Uh, I will show you this when I uh, explain in more detail what the, the verb of a sentence does, or the, the verbal of a sentence does. Now, here we have breakfast. Now, what? What function does breakfast serve in this sentence? Well, it's the thing that is being eaten. So it's the, it's the object of a sentence um, that is being affected by the verb. So if you have he hit him, then he would be the subject, hit would be the, the verb, and him would be the object because the object is being affected by the verb. This can happen either directly or indirectly. I'll show you this as well when we get there. Uh, but for now, we will just say that breakfast here is the object of the sentence. And then we have in Paris. What's the function of in Paris? in this sentence. Well, it tells us where the rest of the sentence is happening, or technically it tells us where the, the verb is happening. So this is the sentence function known as the adverbial. An adverbial could either be uh, time, place, or manner. In this case, we are dealing with an adverbial of uh, of place. I mean, because it's in Paris. Okay, so that's the quick overlook. Now let's go into this stuff in more detail. Um, let's start with subject. The subject of a sentence is then the thing or person 
doing the verb. And all sentence functions can um, consist of more than one word. So if I say, for example, the The man with the book eats. Even though it's, it, it looks gargantuan, it looks huge. We gotta remember that we are after the, the whole entire unit that is doing the eating. And in this sentence, the unit doing the eating is the man with the book. Okay? So we have a huge subject here. A subject consisting of you know, the determiner, subject, preposition, determiner, noun. And together, um, together they form the subject of uh, this sentence. So what I would just advise you to do is don't put too much, um, don't invest too much time and effort into like perfectly learning the, the word class of each word. For analyzing sentences, it's much more important to know how words are chained together into sentence functions. Um, so that's the subject. It's, it's quite simple. It's the thing or the person doing the verb, always. And usually a subject happens or is located to the left of uh, the verb. And we have the verb, the verbal. Uh, the verbal is same as the, the word class, is the action of the sentence. And <clears throat> just keep in mind that the verbal of a sentence can consist of more than one verb. For example, he had been eating. In this sentence, we actually have three verbs, but they form one verbal. Uh, we have two auxiliary verbs and a main verb at the end. So this is sort of the, the main happening, while the other two are just helping us uh, conjugate the sentence into, um, into the, the tense that we would like the, the verb, the verbal to be in. Auxiliary means uh, by the side of or from outside of the main verb. Now, in some languages uh, or some grammar teacher, teachers might call them helping verbs uh, since they, they help the main verb. Okay, so that's the verbal. Let's do the object. The object of a sentence is the thing or the person being affected by the verbal. Uh, 
Um, objects can be either direct or indirect. Example sentence. She gave him the book. If you've been following the rest of the lesson, you know that this is the subject, this is the verb. And then all we need to sort out here are the, the last three words. Now, it might be tempting to say that all of this is just the object. Now, while technically true in the sense that all of them are being affected by the verb, we need to split them apart because they aren't being affected by the verb in the same way. The book is being physically directly affected by the giving. So this is the direct object. While him is the person that is being indirectly affected by the giving because the book is being indirectly given to him. So this is the indirect object. Finally, we have um, the adverbial. Let's make it green. Adverbials are uh, functions which tell us about the time, the place, or the manner. We could say when, where, and how the um, verb is being enacted. So we have when is time, where is place, how is manner. Um, let's give you an example. Time would be, for example, at nine o'clock. Place would be, for example, in Paris. Manner would be, uh, for example, quickly. You can recognize adverbials of uh, of uh, time and place by the fact that they, they begin with prepositions. That's very often the case. It's not often the case for manner, however, because manner could just be any adverbial, like he jumped far, he jumped quickly, he ran quickly, he ran rapidly, he, he ate happily, he, he spoke angrily. All of those would then be manner adverbials. But these, whoops, um, these adverbials of time and place often have, begin with a preposition. Adverbials could well, they are in their proper position, let's say, they are at the end of a sentence. If I say, well, capital, capital letters um, at the beginning of sentences, people, I need to remind myself all the time. Okay, he eats in Paris. Here we then have the subject, we have the verb, we have the adverbial of, here we have place. The adverbials are, are quite flexible in the sense that they can be moved around. And often what you will see is that an adverbial is uh, fronted to the beginning of a sentence. 
So you could say, in Paris, he eats. And the, the exact same meaning would be preserved, even though the adverbial has been switched around. Um, sometimes when you, when you uh, move adverbials around, you get a change in meaning too. So you should be careful when you're, you know, throwing these around, like not, it's not always the case that you could just move something from the end to the, the front of a sentence and still, and still have the same meaning. Um, but sometimes you can. Um, so now we have spoken about the subject, the verbal, the direct and the indirect objects, uh, and adverbials. Now let's take an example sentence. Um, now this is when I would normally ask, <laughs> ask the class to give me, give me an example. But now I'm stuck trying to figure out my own. Okay. this okay whatever it's fine um <laughs> okay Eric loves eating pizza for breakfast now pause the video try to analyze this sentence uh, Resume whenever you want the answers. Okay, so here are the answers. Eric would be the subject because he or I would be the, the person doing the verb here. Now, the reason I was skeptical whether or not to, uh, <laughs> to do this sentence is because we are dealing with something called Gerund uh, here, where an ing ending in a verb makes it into a thing. And so here, even though eating is technically a verb, when I say Eric loves eating, we are using a verb as a thing. So here actually, the entire eating pizza would actually be the object because it's uh, the thing that Eric loves. And it's also the direct object. And finally then we have for breakfast, which is an adverbial. Now here, sometimes the, the, the line between uh, manner and time and even place can be blurred. So I'm not sure what we would call this, but for breakfast, it sounds like it sounds like it's modifying the manner in which the the pizza is being loved eaten, <laughs> if that makes sense. But as long as you know that it's an adverbial, that's enough. Let's do another example. Um, mm -hmm. Messi plays football well. Now, for any Americans watching, football is what you would call soccer. Um, but I mean, the European football is at least played with feet, so that's, I guess that's a, that's a diss uh, towards the American football, I guess. But let's go ahead and analyze this. Messi would be the subject, 
place would be the verbal. Football would be the direct object. And finally, well is an adverbial because it tells us something about the manner in which um, the verb is being enacted. So the playing is happening well. You know, the, the thing that Messi is doing is being done well. I guess one final final example um, The red house is burning brightly. Now, of course, as I told you, a subject can often be more than one word. And that's what we have an example of here. The red house, all of this is the subject. And here we have a double verbal because we are using the progressive present tense, is burning. I will make another video explaining the difference between burns and is burning. Uh, so for now, just accept that is burning is uh, the verbal of this sentence. And then brightly would be an adverbial of manner because it tells us something about how the burning is happening or how the red house is burning. You know, it tells us that it's in a very bright and spectacle-like fashion. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching and uh, have a nice day.